So today we're going to talk about sound levels and playing accents and unaccents and kind of get into a little bit of some basic funk drumming. And uh, I got to credit Dave Garibaldi for this. This stuff comes from him. Uh, the whole sound level thing and working with paradiddles uh, very much. Uh, he has a book called Future Sounds. Highly recommend it. Really dives into this stuff in a big way. So I'm going to give you kind of the basic overview and kind of the basic foundation of what we're trying to do with developing these two sound levels. So the concept is accents and unaccents on the snare drum and hi-hat. That's really what we're talking about. And there's a couple exercises that we can do to develop this. Um, we're going to work with what's called paradiddles. If you don't know what a paradiddle is, a paradiddle is a sticking pattern, and it's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. That's the sticking pattern, okay? We're going to play them in both eighth notes and sixteenth notes. We may even try the triplet one here today and show you how that one works. But um, So what we're talking about mainly, though, is accenting and unaccenting the hi-hat and the snare drum. So on the hi-hat, when we play an accent, we want to play it with the shoulder of the stick on the edge of the cymbal, all right? As opposed to an unaccent, which we're going to play with the tip of the stick up on the top of the, of the uh, cymbal. So more of a shaker sound up here and more of an accented, almost snare drum sort of a sound on the edge. So here's unaccented and here's accented. Now when I'm playing that, I'm really laying into the accent, right? So I'm not just hitting it on the edge, I'm actually playing it louder. And the unaccent, I'm barely playing it, half inch from the playing surface. And the accent, I'm actually doing a full stroke, okay? So let me just play eighth notes with that with a quarter note. All right, just on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four. So obviously very different, all right? Very strong accent. Almost can't hear the second note. It's really like I'm hearing this sort of It's sort of an offbeat, just sort of there for texture, okay? So that's an accent. Now, if I play the same thing and accent the second one, we have a whole different sound. Two, three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Now, without the bass drum and the snare drum, that's pretty easy. With the bass drum and the snare drum, that's kind of hard. So now let's talk about the snare drum. So the snare drum accent, we're going to play a rim shot. Okay? You've probably done these, maybe on purpose, maybe not, but a rim shot is a combination of the stick and the rim and the head all hitting together. So we're not getting a rim click where we're just hitting the rim, but we're hitting the, the snare drum and the rim at the same time, and we get that crack. There's a, just a real bite to it, right? And I'm also hitting pretty close to the center. It's hard to do that consistently. That's the key. Then the unaccented note, I am hitting in the center, and again, half an inch from the drum head, super light. That's the hard part, because you've got to have a lot of control to be able to do that. Okay? Sometimes you'll hear these called ghost notes. That's a very common, and we play them all the time, even if we don't know we're playing them. But that's a ghost note. And so the technique of a ghost note, again, is super low, super relaxed, barely hitting the, the head. I'm really kind of dropping the stick more than anything else. I'm really a, just a controlled drop. Because if I play it, obviously I'm going to get too much stroke and too much sound out of it, right? So that's the idea. Now, we're going to take this paradiddle concept. So we're playing right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Now this on its own is kind of hard because we're going to play a paradiddle with our hi-hat playing the right-hand part and our snare drum playing the left-hand part, okay? I'm going to play two measures of straight rock beat with the bass drum on quarter notes, and then I'm going to go into this without accents, just unaccented, so you can hear the paradiddle and kind of see what I'm talking about at this tempo in the eighth notes. One and two and three, and here's the basic beat. Now here's the paradiddle, no accent. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Now with the accents.
again. So the bass drum's not changing, right? It's all accented, every one of them. This is changing. So all of a sudden, we're going to this very light, except the first note of the paradiddle on the right hand and the first note of the paradiddle on the left hand getting an accent, all right? That is much harder than it looks because your right hand is going to want to follow your right foot and be solid and not be super light like that. So that's why you have to develop the technique of the unaccent and the accent and being able to play those at any time so that the bass drum's not messing with you. So even though you're playing strong and hard over here, you can still play nice and light over there, okay? Now once you get comfortable with that, then we're going to mess you up and <laughs> we're going to move the whole thing over an eighth note. So now instead of the paradiddle starting on one, the paradiddle starts on the and of one. So that means our accented right is now on the and of one and the accented left is now on the and of three. So the sticking becomes like this. I'm just going to say the sticking as I'm playing it for you. Okay, so you can hear it. It's a little tricky. So here's the two bars of the straight beat, and then I'll go into the paradiddle, and I'll say the sticking the best I can without stumbling over my letters. Two, three, four. Here we go. Left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, one. Again, two, three, four. Left, right, left, right, right, left, right. Right, left, right, right, left, 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 right. All right, so now the and becomes the accent. Again, pretty tough. That one is kind of hard to play. Took me a long time to be able to figure that out and to be able to talk about it and talk over it and play it at the same time because it's tricky. There's a lot going on. So now we're going to kick this up a notch and we're going to do it with 16th notes. All right. So we're going to play the same thing, but this time we're going to play 16th note paradiddles with the accent on each beat, okay? Same idea. One, two, two bars straight time. One, two, 16th note. One more time. Now I'm going to move it over 16th note. more time. All right, so that's pretty tricky. And that's kind of fast to do those. So again, I only want to hear the accents. I don't want to hear that other stuff, okay? It's got to be light. It's just a nice little shakery sort of a sound, all right? So this is developing sound levels. Again, a long, long process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight but it's a great exercise to work on and a great technique to develop to again, as I say all the time, to be able to do what we want to do musically because we can technically. We take the technical, we turn it into musical. All right? So enjoy that and uh, continue drumming.